Welcome to Arkham Comics Presents Aaron Reviews Comics, Episode 3. Today we're going to look at Sherlock Frankenstein, Number 1, Dead Man, Number 1, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles slash Ghostbusters 2, Number 1. Let's get to it. Sherlock Frankenstein and the Legion of Evil, Number 1. Lucy Weber is on a search for her father, well, not just her father, but the whole superhero team that he was a part of that had disappeared after defeating the villain known as Antigod. She is a journalist with no leads that decides to start her investigation unconventionally. Why not start her hunt with tracking down the hero's major nemesis, Sherlock Frankenstein? Outside of the insane asylum, Lucy meets the elderly hero Wingman, who is part of the Liberty Squadron, whom her father greatly respected. He's now the warden of the asylum and keeps their superpowered villains behind bars. She's allowed to interview one of Sherlock Frankenstein's creations, a boy who died that was brought back to life and trapped in a metal body known as mectoplasm. The conversation leads nowhere, but on her way out, she's stopped by another villain, Grim Jim, who reveals that he was there when the heroes fought Antigod, and that what he saw changes Lucy's investigation completely. I must admit, I haven't read any of the Black Hammer stories, or any that are set in that world, but I'm a huge fan of offbeat superhero stories. Luckily with this story, there's flashbacks that show you more of who the characters are in that world. This is an extremely well-written comic that will keep you entertained and thinking throughout it. This is absolutely one that you should pick up, especially if you're looking for something that is out of the norm um, as far as hero stories go. Let's look at Dead Man number one. Neil Adams makes his return to the world of Dead Man. Good old Boston brand. He's still dead, though that's probably not a spoiler for anybody. Commissioner Gordon is operating as an ambassador, touring a nuclear site for safety. Discovering that Hook was there to kill Gordon, Dead Man is given flashbacks of his own demise. The Hook was thought to have failed by his sensei, as Boston's twin brother had taken up the living guise of Dead Man. As the sensei sought to kill the Hook, Dead Man possessed him, not wanting him to die this way. Dead Man thought the Hook to have been killed, leaving him feeling unjustified for his own murder. Before running into him once again, as he sees he's an assassin. As the Hook confronts Gordon, Dead Man realizes that something with Gordon is off. In avoiding any spoilers, pick up this issue yourself and enjoy the angry ranting and brutality of the mad Bostonian Dead Man. It's a great read, jumping between timelines to reveal the full scope of the story. It ends with a great confrontation between Dead Man and Bruce Wayne, setting up for the following issue to reveal the sensei and where he's been. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Ghostbusters 2, number 1. Derry is done, former crime lord, assassinated by the Order of Splinter, is dead. But Bronson, a spirit stuck in limbo, just might know how he can exact his revenge. The Ghostbusters have been messing with the interdimensional gateways again, resulting in the return of the Collectors. This time they have hunted down the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, turning into crazy versions of each of them. As Donatello breaks through the dimensional rift, he contacts Egon and Ray, just before the Collectors appear, warning the Ghostbusters to stay out of their fight. The Turtles have been trapped in limbo by Darius, and the Ghostbusters have been working on a plan. Three weeks had passed for them, where it had only been a few minutes for the Turtles. Donatello and Ray are mind-swapped, and the Ghostbusters begin to expose the Collectors' weakness. But time is running out to find a, find a permanent fix, so what's going to happen? Pick up this awesome first issue, a story that's good for anyone of just about any age, and give yourself a nostalgic feels as you jump from page to page with these two classic teams. Each of these books is available for purchase at Arkham Comics and Wilson and Rocky Mount. For all of your comic book needs and all of your toy needs, head to Arkham Comics, Wilson, and Rocky Mount. And that's it for this, this week's edition of Arkham Presents Heron Reviews Comics. So until next time, let's get reading.